This will create a list. This will create a dictionary. And this will create a set. What about this one? No, not a tuple. A generator. Yes, the yield thing. The one you pretend doesn't exist. But not for much longer. Welcome to Skinning the Snake. A series where we'll uncover Python's deepest secrets by tearing it apart and examining its beautiful insights. Zip map filter enumerate, a funny function that constantly yields, a list expression but with round ones. What do they all have in common? They are lazy. That can be a good thing. It's not like you when a piss bottle slips through your greasy pizza fingers and you just can't afford a little stretch. It's more like when a hard-working single mother postpones getting groceries because her no-good child ate the principal's chocolate cake again. Pretty busy, if you ask me. In coding, lazy means waiting for when the calculation is actually required. This allows the program to allocate resources more efficiently or sometimes even not have to do anything at all. As always, this is not a magical solution to every problem you can encounter. A game that loads all of its textures before opening the main menu is as bad as the one that waits until the very last moment and has the characters pop out of nowhere, ruining any hopes of immersion. In Python, you usually first stumble upon generators when in the perfect world of Lego Duplo kindergartner-friendly pre-installed Jupyter notebooks, you print out a result of a map and suddenly nothing works as it's supposed to. There's a growing uneasiness. How can it be empty? You ask yourself. Who ate my chocolate cake? See, if lists are like calm and static lakes, generators are more like fast-flowing streams and, as you well know, you can't step into the same river twice. You can access the items in a generator one by one by using next, but doing so will consume it with every next byte. In general, the objects that can be eaten with next are called iterators and objects that can be made into iterators with iter are called iterables. While iterators and iterables sound similar, they have distinct important roles in the process of iteration, also known as doing a loop. Iterables are everything that can be iterated upon. They are the distant abstractions behind being able to loopsy loop around. Iterators are their grounded mechanical counterparts, they keep track of what happens at every step of the iteration, they know exactly which item to provide and when to end. When you run a for loop, you need to provide an iterable, something abstract, that will immediately be converted into something concrete, an iterator. That iterator will be consumed until it's empty and then the loop will terminate. All iterators can be iterated, so naturally they are iterables. Using iter on an iterator doesn't impact it in any way. Looping over an iterator will consume it as usual. Iterables that are not iterators are a bit more interesting as they are usually reusable. One example would be lists. Whenever you loop on a list, an iterator will be created and consumed, but the original list will stay intact. You can, however, create an iterator with iter manually and see how a for loop leaves nothing but an empty shell behind. And if you just need a list, list function will happily take any iterable and pack it into a nice, calm and static lake of a list. Where were we? All oh, right, generators. We know now that generator expressions return special iterators called generators instead of lists. What about generator functions? Those are a bit more tricky as they involve a weird concept called yield. And yields are weird. 
They look like returns and they feel like returns, but they are not in fact returns. When a function has at least one yield, it will no longer behave the same. We call those generator functions. A generator function, remember a function with at least one yield in its definition, will always return a generator. Regular functions may return a non, if there are no returns in them, or whatever comes after the first encountered return keyword. A generator function will always return a generator, and it will do so immediately after you run it. Just like a generator expression, it will not do any calculations until you first bite it with next. So lazy. Only then it will actually start running the code and it will go on until it gets to the first yield or return. If it's a yield, next will return whatever value that yield offered and then wait for another next. If it's a return, it will raise a stop iteration signaling that it is done just like any other iterator would. It will even use the returned value as a message for stop iteration. All of this makes writing generator functions a bit different. Let's talk patterns. Yields don't end the function run, so you can have as many of them as you want to. If you want to end, you must return instead. Yields naturally work with loops. While in regular functions you would use returns and loops to find an item in an iterable, in generator functions you use yields to filter and map the data. It's very similar to how list comprehensions work. There's a reason why generators can be returned from both generator expressions and generator functions. In general, if your function is supposed to take an iterable like a list and then return an iterable, it might be a great fit for a generator. If it's supposed to return a single value, you should use a regular function instead. Generator functions are so tailored for iterables that besides yield, there's also yield from that takes an iterable and yields for every value in it. Generators can be even more complicated, so close your eyes and ears for 30 seconds if you think that this is already too much. You can pretend they're tiny wee programs. Instead of nexting them, you can send to them and then receive the result with yield. Told ya, yield is not exactly like return. You can even shove an error into them like a torpedo to a thermal exhaust port and unless it's expected, they will blow up from the inside. Yes, it is a very niche and complicated use case, but hey, it's you who wanted to know everything about generators. Sorry, but no refunds. Here we are, masters of generators. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. We have a tiny Discord community where we talk projects and learning, so feel free to join.